Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Richard. I'm part of the sales team here at PSPDF Kit. Um, we're going to be doing another kind of live demo of PSPDF Kit and how it, it can integrate into a multitude of different applications and workflows. Um, going to give us a few minutes to allow people to get started um, and join. We do have a couple other people behind the scenes today, one being Guillermo. Um, he's one of our front end web engineers. He's been with us for several years. Um, if you have any technical questions during the call, he'll be kind of monitoring those and kind of answering those, um, as we go along, I'll do my best to kind of keep an eye on it as well, but uh, we'll be a good resource. A uh, couple of things we like to do at the beginning of all of these is, um, give you some ideas of like where you can find answers or, you know, connect with the team larger. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll share our contact information in case you want to reach out to us directly. And then we can uh, also set up additional time um, if needed. So wonderful. So I'm going to minimize the chat um, and share my screen. Okay. Share this, okay. Everyone should see our landing page. And yes, we are doing a live demo right now, so we can cancel that. So um, a little history about PSPDF Kit. Um, we've been in the space for over a decade now providing you know, PDF support for a multitude of different workflows, whether it be you know, viewing documents within an application, you know, annotating, signing, um, marking up documents um, in an application. We also offer an array of server-side tools to for batch processing and things like that. Um, so anything kind of document-centric, you know, around the PDF um, spec, we, we've really become experts on. So one of the things we wanted to do today is go in and provide an overview of um, a couple of different ways you can use our framework, you know, some best practices on how to use the, the SDK, um, you know, so, you know, as we go through that, feel free to ask questions again in the chat. Um, I see David's already posted one. Thanks for that, David. Um, and was that, so yes. So PSPDF kit we work largely across a number of different industries. Um, one of the things, you know, our, our website can do very well is kind of give you so, some insight into kind of how other um, customers of ours use us. So, you know, if we look at the aviation industry, you can come in and see, you know, different airlines such as United um, or Legion are using us uh, along with, you know, different, you know, end user applications that sell to airlines. Um, what's neat about our website and what our marketing and product team has done well is kind of show you some, you know, high level, you know, advantages of using PSPDF kit. Um, but we also go into certain things such as, you know, different, you know, um, different components that we uh, license. So, you know, speaking of components, you know, one of the things I do like to highlight on these is, you know, PSPDF kit will allow you to get started um, and use a trial key. Um, so it allows you to come in and select what type of application you're working on. So if you're working on a mobile app, um, maybe you're in a scenario where right now everyone has to leave your mobile app to you know, download the PDF, you know, annotate it, and then you have to upload it back into the document. Um, PSPDF kit would be a great alternative as it allows you to view and manipulate the document all within the app itself. Same thing for web apps, you know, different integrations such as um, SharePoint, Teams, Salesforce. You know, the idea is you're bringing in, you know, PDF viewing and manipulation and batch processing, as I see in the chat, um, directly inside your application rather than sending it out. So, you know, for the majority of the tools we provide, they are self-hosted. So you're deploying these in your own infrastructure. Um, no information is pinging back to us. You're able to completely um, control the document workflow. So again, if you want to do a trial um, back to our mobile app, you know, you look at your front end, you know, maybe you're doing, you know, a React Native application. Um, you know, are you deploying on iOS and Android? 
And then what that allows you to do is you hit get started and then we have documentation that can run you through getting up and running with, um, you know, our evaluation key. So evaluation key is a great way to test out everything that we, t we have for we have to offer. So generally speaking, when you look at PS PDF kit, um, we license it primarily based on the components and the functionality you want to support. So if you come to us and you have a conversation with our technical or sales team, um, one of the things we're commonly going to ask is, you know, what components do you need? Um, you know, what type of workflow? Um, when you're using the trial key, you'll notice that we have a multitude of different things. So back to our iOS example, you'll see that we have a number of, you know, components that you can you can consider everything from viewing documents to OCRing documents, you know, being able to apply signatures. So, you know, when you move into kind of a commercial model, you'll be able to pick and choose the components. So awesome. So one of our growing um products that we see a lot of interest in is, is our, our, our web SDK. So specific to web apps, um, you know, browser-based applications that, you know, primarily you might be downloading the PDF, opening it up in, you know, a PDF editor like Adobe, or, you know, you're kicking out to DocuSign to sign documents of that way. So one of the, one of the things you can do with our web framework is you can bring that functionality into your application itself without going elsewhere. So today, one of the focus largely on the web app, um, you know, as we've seen the industry change over the years, more and more customers of ours are coming to us wanting to do web first and then following up with um, mobile apps or, you know, vice versa. It's, it's certainly, um, certainly dependent on, you know, where you're starting. So, you know, looking at this view, so this is a web application running with our framework. So you'll see the sidebar here. This is a custom sidebar we've implemented, but really PS PDF kit running under the hood is this, this box here. So starting with the thumbnail view here um, and to the right, this is PS PDF kit in your application. So anytime you open up a document, this is what you would see. Um, the, the bar on top also custom as well. So, you know, this kind of gives you an idea of the customization options. So, you know, not to, to pass over it quickly, our viewer um, is, is, you know, our is kind of our core component. Everything's built on top of our viewer for our front end Apple SDKs, um, you know, in terms of performance, it's incredibly performance in terms of downloading. Um, we provide both a client side and server side integration. So both being able to download the PDF quickly, um, but also provide opportunities for you to use the server side integration to lazy load or download pages on demand um, for those larger PDFs that you might need. So some of the common viewer features that you see are zooming, you know, you, uh, I can fit the, fit the document to the window, um, being able to search for keywords within the document and then toggle through them. Um, downloading the document, you know, we, we really allow you to control the document workflow. So where is the document coming from? Where does it go? By default, I have it downloading here, but you could also have, you know, hit download to you know, your local server. You could have it export to email. Um, you have really control of where the document comes from, where it goes. So if you're doing a DRM or any type of you know, e-reader where you need to protect the document itself, we can help you make it very difficult to export the document. So, excuse me. So other nifty viewer features, you know, being able to toggle through the PDF, um, seeing thumbnails of the document itself for, for easy navigation, um, things you would expect with a, with a reader and things like that. Um, outline of the PDF, you know, being part of, you know, an industry where PDFs are commonly used and relied upon, there are some specifications that, you know, are expected with PDFs. Um, PSPF kit does a, a tremendous job on adhering to the spec in a lot of different areas where, you know, we want documents that you're using in our framework or with another tool to be cross compatible. So, you know, outlines is something that, you know, 
if a document was created, let's say in Adobe and then pulled up in PSPDF kit, we would be able to detect the outline that was created and, and be able to use that. A lot of our annotations operate the same way um, in terms of you know having an annotation log or even being able to bookmark pages um, within the document. Okay, so a lot of things there. So let me pause real quick and check out the chat. Guillermo looks like you are on top of everything. Um, in terms of the customization, yeah, that's something I was definitely going to go into next. So one of the great thing about our viewer is, you know, the ability to customize the appearance of it. So, you know, if we're talking about, you know, just the general, you know, interaction with the document, you can see, you know, if I run um, a flipbook example, you know, being able to customize the page transitions from document to document, how customers are, your customers or your internal users are interacting with PDFs. But additionally, you can also look to see with the user interface, if you wanted to do toolbar customization and do things such as, you know, I want to disable uh, exporting because I don't want people to export the document. I want to disable printing because I don't want people to print. You can see these happening in real time. Um, no one in my organization is going to be using shapes. Um, you know, zooming. You know, zooming is super important. So I want it to be the first. You know, I want it to be one of the first things people see. So you have a lot of different abilities to customize this the way you want. Um, I really wanted just to cut it all and say, you know, the only thing people are going to be allowed to do is, you know, search the document. I can do that as well. So now you can see the toolbar up here. I, I allow people to search and that's it. So that is, that is, you know, some abilities that we provide within, you know, a lot of the custom customization options, um, you know, themes, you know, being able to switch to dark mode. We know this is really prevalent, like in the uh, e-reader e industry or, you know, learning management systems. If people are doing work at night, um, we have the ability to do that. Um, but there's other things as well, like in terms of customizing the sidebar. So, yeah, you know, we pro one of the really nice things about, you know, PSPDF kit and we provide a ton of custom examples. So, you know, anytime you're seeing something I'm showing today, you can come in and go into our documentation and we provide some custom examples um, on how to, to do these things itself. So great question on, on the viewer. So, so yeah, that's our viewer. Um, a lot there to, to kind of take in, but it's a great tool to kind of bring PDF viewing within your application. Um, specifically, if you have any things you need to protect or if you just don't want people leaving, yeah, um, leaving. Yeah. Cool. Guillermo, you are on it today. Appreciate it. Um, the SOC 2 Type 2. Um, that's super helpful. So, you know, coming back to our component list, you know, you know, we're looking at web today. You see viewer. Um, the next one I would like to cover is annotations. Annotations is really where we see a lot of people coming to us. Um, you know, uh, it's one of the core components of where people need to start marking up documents. Um, so, you know, if we go back to our viewer page, um, we have over 21 different annotation types. A lot of these are already on the document, but, you know, being able to select text um, and then having the over um, the pop up to, you know, highlight, strike through, edit documents such as that. Um, you have a lot of ability to, you know, add an additional layer to the document um, with certain markups and stuff like that. Um, you know, if I scroll to the bottom, here's a number of the tools that we, you know, we offer and tend on the toolbar. So, you know, I'm using the drawing, the drawing annotation type currently. So, you know, as with, you know, our editor, we provide an inspector. When I say inspector, it allows you to customize, you know, the actual annotations itself, being the, the color, um, the backfill. Um, we can look at the transparency of the document. You know, what do I want to be able to, or the transparency of the annotation um, and then line thickness as well. So, you know, really trying to be able to give you the tools. You can set presets for all this as well. Um, if there's certain things you want to see, I can also make, 
node annotations on this that, you know, we're doing a, a live demo on May 3rd. Um, and that's why we were doing this. So cool. You can see. All right. And then if we want to get rid of it, we just delete the annotation. All right. Um, other types of, uh, we have highlighting, you know, um, super important. Um, you know, if you need to do anything, we have the ability, you can select an entire annotation, delete it, or you can use our eraser as well. So some options there. You can see the drop down here. Uh, other annotation types, you know, if you wanted to add a stamp, um, we do use the same stamp template as Adobe. Um, so, you know, those stamps do come over if you're using Adobe in another area. Um, and then you could also use these. You also have the ability to import your own stamps if you need to, um, which can be quite helpful based on your workflow. Again, you know, we being more of a generic, you know, PDF SDK gives you a lot of capabilities to customize, you know, bring in your own stamp templates. You know, even within we have a custom stamp template here. So, you know, we kind of help you here if you need to put um, things there. So that's a custom stamp. All right. Other things, um, you can add an image to the PDF. So I can add this. Here's a the background of my computer, <laughs> where you're able to do that as well. Um, other annotation types would be able to add a note. So add a note, you've seen me do this already, but you can change the different appearance of the, the annotation icon on where it is. So we could bring this over here and then add a note annotation. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Uh, text. Um, and the last one is, you know, we can do a shape annotation if we need to. Um, one thing I would want to point out is like, you know, we do try to do some industry specific things. Um, so like cloud annotations we know are widely used in the uh, construction industry. So we have the ability to change the outside um, borderline of a shape annotation to be a cloud annotation. So yeah, you know, you know, if you are evaluating PSPDF kit and there's anything that you think that would be helpful for um, your use case, we'd love to hear it. Um, it might be on our roadmap. It might be something we already do that might just not be exposed, um, but we definitely want to hear from customers and things like that. So yeah, annotations. Um, what? A lot of people come to us with, with annotation use cases and things like that. So cool, I'll stop and check out the chat. Awesome, cool. It looks like a number of you are already in touch with our team. Um, some people looking for at least preliminary pricing. Um, I can provide my email at the end if you know. Obviously, we can we can set up a demo session or a, a call with the with the team, but we can also handle things via email. Um, so we we'd be happy to handle that. So at the end of the session, I'll leave my contact information if you just want to email me directly, and I can connect you or help out. Wonderful. So moving on to a, a couple other things. So, you know, PDF acro forms have been a great way to um, organize and collect data when dealing with documents. Um, when we look at forms, uh, essentially you're bounding a PDF annotation to a certain part of the document. So, you, you know, you can force people to fill out certain things. So, you know, uh, we can come in and fill out forms. So if you know you do have PDF forms, you have the ability to fill them out. Um, what's really nice about our framework is you know we have the ability to recognize existing forms, make these editable. So you can come in and manually fin fill them out, and then when you export them, you can export them to your existing database and organize this information as you need. So most of this stuff is extractable. You can also um, do things to pre-fill documents. So if you have forms that you know you have the information already available, you can programmatically fill that information out so that when the document renders, 
it's already there for you, um, which is quite nice. So you're able to, you know, really, um, really help increase efficiency within your workflows, um, help your users not have to fill out the same stuff and over. So, you know, different form fields, drop down, you know, check boxes. Um, we have radio buttons. Um, and then also if there's a signature box, if you click on the signature box, we do support e-signatures. So I would be able to sign um, as my friend, Johnny Smith, um, and then, you know, have some options here to apply that. So then we bound that to the, the signature box. So, you know, if I wanted to down, download the form, I'm working in Chrome today. So, you know, so the e-signature, you know, product you really had buttons or annotations to PDF. So you can, yep, Guillermo's already on it. So I'll let Guillermo answer those in the chat. So um, we support two different types of forms. Um, the first one I showed was uh, electronic signature. So you have basically an electronic signature where I'm using, you know, a written signature. I can also upload the signature myself. Um, I think like if I have an image of my signature, I can upload it and use that. I can also type my signature um, if I need to as well. So I'm able to apply that to the document, um, drag and drop it. You know, if I wanted to remove that, I can bring it in here as well. So a couple different ways for you to sign. So if you see, um, this would be the downloaded form. I'm using Chrome. So this is being powered by PDFium um, and you can see all the form fields are filled out uh, with the signature there. And the signature has been flattened into the PDF, so I'm not able to move it. So, yep. On, on the signature side, someone asked um, around, you know, legally binding signatures. So we support two different types of signatures. One is what you just saw. It's called electronic signature. It's essentially, um, it's essentially a ink annotation that you add to the, the PDF and then you can burn it, you know, flatten it into the document um, and you can see it's reflected here, okay? Um, additionally, PSP Kit provides the vehicle to allow for digital signatures to occur as well. While PSP Kit is not a certificate authority, what we do is we provide APIs and tools for you to apply a certificate to the PDF. So still you see the same workflow of, you know, applying the signature, but with this, I'm applying a digital certificate to the PDF as well. So then the SDK recognizes that the document has been digitally signed. Where a digital signature becomes really helpful is there's certain criteria for me to distinguish that I am Johnny Appleseed. Um, but a digital signature also, if the document's edited in any way, so let's just see, I highlight this, um, the banner will invalidate the digital signature and notify everyone there that the document has been digitally signed, but it's been modified. So, you know, in terms of legality, every country has its own different um, laws around you know, what is a legal, legally binding signature. So, you know, we do provide both, both a, you know, electronic signature, but also a digital signature. Um, so it just depends on kind of what you want to do. We work with companies in the, you know, the notary space. We work with, you know, e-signature providers like DocuSign as one of our clients. So we have a lot of array of how people are using us for signatures. Um, especially if they're trying to bring them in-house rather than using a third-party solution. Um, one thing I did want to show real quick, if we come back to the form, um, something that we've been working on quite hard and have been, you know, um, you know, investing on efforts is, you know, oftentimes form forms don't exist. So we've created a PDF form um, creator and editor. So, what that allows me to do is I'm actually able to take existing forms. So, you know, if we start from scratch here um, and I'm going to go ahead and delete all these forms, you know, if you had a document that was commonly filled out by hand, you could use our form creator to then start, you know, creating a form. So, you know, if I want a signature box here, 
I can create the signature box. You know, we have certain things. So, you know, you know, what color do I want it to be? So I can, what's the border color? Um, you know, if I print, will it be apparent? Things like that. So you can create forms if you want to. So, you know, I'll do signature field. In advance, I can do creator name, things like that. Um, and then it's got an ID. It's got a form ID there, there, there. So other things, obviously, that you can do. I can put maybe a radio button here that I want to attend the course. Um, I can put my check boxes here that I was using. But you're able to kind of create a dynamic form um, on the fly, um, which is really helpful. We see this a lot in e-signature use cases where like you might have a contract where you want to sign it digitally. So, you know, what you would want to do is come in and maybe put an extra signature field here. So we have two people that are able to sign. So, um, so yeah, so a couple things we can do, um, you know, I can go first name, I can go last name, things like that. But I can download the document after I've done this. Um, you know, if I open it in another PDF viewer, you can see that these things have occurred. Um, so I'm able to use another PDF editor. I'm able to you know, fill out the form. So, you know, whether you're using it in your application and then, you know, someone might take that form and fill it out somewhere else, you know, since we follow the PDF spec in this point, so most PDF viewers are going to be able to do this. Um, so I can also open it up back in PS PDF kit. Um, and you can see the rendering speed and then I'm back here, I can be able to sign and do these things too. So, yeah, so, you know, what we just covered in terms of the components um, were quite a, quite a few different things. So, you know, viewing, annotation, form viewing and filling, form creation, you know, electronic and digital signatures. So, you know, we see a lot of people in the industry looking to bring e-signatures in-house, um, you, know, you know, especially if you're, you're, you're paying a good deal based on the number of envelopes, it's something you can bring in and, and, you know, kind of control the document workflow and things like that. Uh, and we're happy to walk you through options. So cool. So we're about 27 minutes in. i um, got a couple more cool things to show you. Um, you know, one of the, one of the big gaps in the industry right now is the ability to edit um the pdf itself so you know most of the stuff we've been doing here we've been adding an additional layer to the document so you know i'm taking i'm adding to the document but ultimately like what's already on the pdf i can't change so we've relate we've released something called our content editor which now allows that type of workflow where i can come in and actually change the underlying text on the PDF. So, you know, we've got a live webinar um, being done by John Smith. Um, and so this is something that we're really, really excited about, you know, the ability to kind of find, you know, small mistakes, you know, think every time you convert a Word document to a PDF and then you go to sign it and you realize like the date's wrong or something like that, you have to go back to the Word document being able to use the content editor allows you to update these documents. You know, what if you just need to change a date? What if, you know, it's an old form and you just need to change the options? You know, this allows you to do this all within your application without going outside of it. So, you know, you can see some, you know, some text changes here, but, you know, being able to move the Versions PDF use the read only. We want to change the main versions. I'll let Marin, um, Guillermo help with that one. So the content editor is, is super awesome. Um, you know, in, in terms of being able to manipulate the PDF itself. Um, you know, slide title, we'll do title number one. You know, company, we are PS PDF kit, um, and things like that. So that's been something we've been really proud of um, in our engineering team of building, and so. You know, this helps us, you know, be able to allow you to do more within your application without leaving us. Mm -hmm. So great. Oh, yep. We'll save it. Use it for another day. Um, other tools that you commonly see um, end user tools do is like being able to merge and rearrange pages. So, you know, think 
you know, uploaded a document and, you know, you forgot a page. Now you can, you know, do, or you can delete pages. You can duplicate pages. You can rotate the orientation. This is super helpful if you have a workflow where you're scanning in a lot of documents. Um, I can import um, documents as well to merge them. So I can bring in my form creator. I can import my other, I'll import a couple of the other things we do. So I can save or oh, I can overwrite the existing thing or I can save as, but now you can see like, here's some of the stuff. Here's the contract we signed earlier. Here's some of the slides we do. Here's the form we created. I can still sign it. So, you know, it really brings a complete suite of, you know, document and like in your infrastructure, in your application without ever having to leave. Um, and so like each time we've done an operation, you know, if you're using another tool, you have to download it, you have to upload it. There's, there's a lot of, a, a, there's a lot of things that we can do here. Um, Cool. So that's content editing. So a couple, a couple final things to, to kind of go over as we're kind of winding out with like about 15 more minutes. I do want to, I do want to note that um, though we are a PDF SDK, we are, we have the ability to work with other document types. So you know, taking image PNGs, TIFFs, JPEGs, taking Office files, um, we're able to take those those and convert them to a PDF and use all the same tools we did today. So, you know, if I had had an Office file, let's say it's a Microsoft Word file, um, I'd be able to take an Office document. Here's a docx, um, and I'm able to convert it to a PDF. Um, you know, now that we've converted it back to like our old our old scenario. Um, you know, maybe there's something that I need to fix. So I'm able to do a lot of that kind of stuff, which is great. Um, same things with Excel files, you know, converting those to PDF and PowerPoints as well. Yeah, Richard. So great question. Um, so essentially this list that I've been going for, each one of these line items are basically licensable components. So, you know, if your V1 is just viewing, but you want to come back and, you know, add annotations, we allow you to basically build that roadmap. Um, obviously you can license everything, um, but generally speaking, you know, we do try to tie in the, the components based to your requirements. So you're not paying for anything that you don't need. Um, so, you know, a lot of people have V1s, V2s, V3s, you know, we can, we can align like a custom subscription for that um, rather than, you know, paying a huge fee for a bunch of stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so cool. So things like that. Um, in terms of anything else um, that I wanted to show, you know, one of the big use cases now with a lot of security compliance and stuff is being able to redact PDFs. Um, when we look across the industry itself, um, a lot of vendors do something where they put an annotation over the PDF. Um, they put backfill on it. So if you're watching, you can see the word signer is here. So if I search signer, on the PDF, get three hits. So um, what a lot of PDF SDKs do, not a lot, but they'll, they'll use this as a redaction, they'll export it. Um, and then when they go to open it back up, it looks like it's been removed, but if I search for it, I'm still getting three hits because that, that that first hit is still there. It hasn't been removed from the document. So, you know, if I refresh and I use our redaction tool, um, I use our redaction tool, which is here, I can do a text redaction. So I can select the text. I can put an overlay on it. So we were doing a live demo today. And that's why I'm redacting this yellow um, and then within my redaction toolbar I can apply the redaction 
So the difference now is if I go in and search for signer, I'm only getting two hits now instead of three. So we have permanently removed that from the document. So, you know, this document, you would not be able to get that information from anymore. Um, and so we permanently redact that information. Um, if, you know, it's not text, we can do area redaction. So if you wanted to remove someone's face from maybe an application, we could do that. So redaction is a great thing to do. A um, couple pre-built things we've done. So, you know, like if you're able to do smart redaction. So if you're able to pre-select, you could scan the document and pre-select certain things. So I'm currently processing a document um, and it's telling me here's all the things based on my auto detect sensitive information criteria that it says these are the things you should probably redact. So I can see a preview. I'm good. I can apply the I can I can apply the redactions, which is quite great. So a couple different scenarios, like if I'm pulling like a car insurance, you know, I can see all the different um, different ways that you know you can redact things. So you know. Um, doo -doo -doo. Cool. Um, apart from that, um, the last thing that I wanted to show before I kind of give some things is I'm going to shape. I'm going to change the what we're doing in terms of the screen so I can share my entire screen with everybody. So share, share. One second. Share screen. Uh, entire screen here. Okay, cool. So you should be able to see my desktop. Um, okay. So um, several years ago, our engineering team and our product team put our heads together and tried to figure out where were the pitfalls in using PDFs currently. Um, you know. They were often used for single threaded workflows. You know, if I annotated a document, you know, what we wanted to be able to do is if I'm working on a document and someone else is not, is working on a document, like if I get done with this, I have to download this. I have to go and save it back to where it was. Someone else has to come back over here. We have to open that document. And that's the only way we would be able to share kind of, you know, what's going on. We built something called PSP Kit Instant. What PSP Kit Instant is a real-time collaboration and complex resolution um, engine. So what it does is anytime there's a change to the document, so I'm highlighting, anyone with access to it is updated in real time. So think like Google Docs almost, but for, for PDFs. So, you know, it helps with conflict resolution. Um, it also allows you to do a number of different things. So like, even if you're not having multiple people collaborate on the same document, think about just you moving from one device to another. I'm going from my iPad to my desktop to my phone. With PSP Certificate Instant, these changes are always persistent and sent back to the server in real time. You know. If you're offline, not a big deal. Um, once you come back online, it'll persist those changes as well. Um, if I do anything extraordinary to the document, let's say I'm gonna delete this, I'm gonna decide to delete these two pages and I save it. It sends a notification to everybody that has access to it that it's been modified and I should re reload it and I'm seeing this. So, um, and it's got a lot of cool things. One of the things we've recently really improved is we have a threaded commenting thing. So, so, so threaded commenting. So similar to what you would expect in like Google Docs and stuff like that, I can now have a threaded conversation. Um, hey, Richard. So, so I can have this conversation on certain things and you can see that I can take my instant comments and add it to certain parts of the document. So I'm like, oh, maybe we need to uh, remove this part. Um, I do at mention Guillermo. So one of the things we just we just released was you can now 
at mention people. So Guillermo's working there. I could at mention him. He would understand. And so like, it's really bringing more of a collaborative experience for anybody who really has multiple people working on the document. So, you know, in terms of like, Amit, you're asking about a review mode. We have certain things we've built in called collaboration permissions. So I have the ability to, um, I have the ability to distinguish who has permissions to do what. So um, this was a big tool we built during, we, we really expanded on during the pandemic because you know, a lot of teachers and schools were going um, remote. So one of the things we, we built was something called collaboration permission. So what it does is I can distinguish what part of my annotations are public and private. So, you know, I can put something on the document that everyone sees. I can have my private annotations. There's a lot there that I can do. Um, do with that. So uh, here's an instant comment that we tagged Olivia and she can see that it's from the teacher because you can use API author names within this um, and things like that. Maybe the teacher doesn't like Olivia and she's going to leave a private note to give her an F or something. I don't know. But you have the ability to control the, um, the visibility of annotations and like that, that. And you can also do permission based on the document to say, this is view only, this is things like that. So you, um, this is just another example of that. So you can see with the lock, you know, we put an evaluate next week, but that's not shared with everyone else. So we have uh, public and private annotations like that. So quite helpful. Um, you know, if we come back into our web demo, um, certain things that you would be able to do. Let me get my instant session up back and running. I'm back in. Maybe I want to go to the annotation list and I can see what was done. Um, when this stuff was done, I can see timestamps. I can also add API author names here. So I could see that Richard did this, Guillermo did this, Johnny Smith did this, and you'd be able to do that um, and be able to track that. So. It's a great tool. Um, you know, I think for PDFs, you know, depending on, you know, your workflow, you would, would be able to either use our standard SDK if you move one along to the other, but instant permissions is a great instant and instant collaboration is a great tool to bring kind of your workflows into kind of today's workflow. So great. So I know we only have a couple more minutes. Um, a few more things, you know, I showed get started and how you get started with a, with a trial. Um, we have full fledged documentation for each one of our products. You can see change logs on what we're releasing. I mean, you'll see that, you know, April 11th was our last release. Um, you know, before that March 22nd, March 9th, we're regularly updating the framework to fix bugs, you know, change things, add APIs, release new features. This is at being actively maintained pretty aggressively by our team. Um, so, you know, just going into the documentation, you change log, you can go see all our APIs. We don't gatekeep our documentation. Um, excuse me. You can also see our, our full documentation on things like that. So, you know, if you wanted to look at our OCR engine, you could, you could do that. You know, we have a proprietary OT OCR engine that we built. Um, that is fantastic. Um, so just a lot of things that you can do here. A um, couple questions on the chat. Obviously, with contact sales, you know, we do have a sales form that you can fill out. This goes to our team. Um, with that, you know, most of our team members are going to try and get you set up with you know, one of our solutions engineers and one of our sales team members to get you pricing as soon as possible. You know, as we talked today, we talked about a lot of different components, a lot of different SDKs, um, you know, a lot of different workflows. So we try to do a bespoke pricing model so we can match your use case. You know, if you're a startup, we want to know that, you know, if, you know, you're deploying this on-premise to 100 customers around the world, we want to know that. If you have security requirements that, you know, no data can leave outside, you know, uh, the EU, like we want to know that. So that information is good to know. Um, we can get on a call. 
Um, you can schedule a call directly without even filling out the form. You can come in and pick a day that's maybe, you know, tomorrow morning. If you wanted to, you know, put on a call for 9 a.m., you could do that. Um, additionally, you know, you can email us. You can also have technical support. You don't want to get on a call. You, we don't have to get on a call. We can handle it through email. We can learn about your requirements there for sure. So, um, yeah, a lot of information here. Um, I'm going to put my email um, my email um, and some contact information in the chat. You are welcome to email me directly at any point um, if you have questions. Um, you know, and the last thing I would do before we jump off here is, you know, if you have any technical questions or stuff like that, we do have a support desk. You can do that. You can also email me directly, and I can help. I can help out getting you set up with the with the solutions engineer of our engineering team. But wonderful. Um, thank you everyone for asking questions. This is awesome. Um, this certainly helps us learn more about how people are gonna be using our product and how we can continue to improve. Um, yeah, I, I look forward to talking to everybody. Um, thanks again and hope everyone enjoys the rest of their Wednesday. Richard, thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the comments. Appreciate it.